गुड आफ्टरनून Okay, so welcome back, students. So let's wait for one or two minutes more, so that the rest of you join. Then we will start. Okay, so now most of you are here, so we can start. Okay, so we are talking about uh, enzymes. And the enzymes we have done about uh, your nucleases, uh, ligases, and the polymerase. And uh, we were at polymerases. And uh, we talked about uh, two types of polymerase. One is a normal polymerase, in which uh, uh, we got from the uh, of both eukaryotic and prokaryotic resource. Because polymerases are the enzyme which do the job of polymerization. And uh, in case of DNA, we are, talk, we are talking about the DNA polymerase, means we are talking about the DNA polymerization. 
and uh, these enzymes are involved in the DNA replication. And uh, when we are talking about DNA replication, what is the property of your DNA is for having there? Same uh, role they are playing in case of our multi-biology also. Pipeline three prime polymerization, three prime pipeline hexonuclease, or pipeline three prime hexonuclease activity. So how they do? What uh, they do in the polymerization? So they what they need? They need three prime OH and five prime phosphate. And ATP is also required for this process. And uh, this is the uh, difference in the primer. So if primer is there, then only polymerase can conduct the polymerization. Otherwise, they won't. So they have to do and they extend your strand as much as your complementary strand is. So the requirement of polymerase is a template strand, a primer, nucleotide, uh, nucleotide in the form of triphosphate, the NTPs, uh, 3 prime OH and 5 prime phosphate group. In the requirement, you can have three different types of polymerase, pol 1, pol 2, pol 3. And uh, it is different, uh, their nature, their property, their uh, rate, uh, their other property they have. So the polymerase 3, that is the one which is playing on in the replication. So there is very high speed. And uh, your pole 1 and for many pole 1 play role in the repair mechanism. So in which we to reduce all 3 when do the new replication. Going to the Zenic translation, also you can say it can be translated in the menu. So, use the term leak translation, it means uh, uh, it is being translated, means you are removing, uh, in case uh, these groups can be replaced. So, that's the term we use the leak translation. And uh, don't get confused with the Thing we talked about when someone of you asked the term what is the difference between the nick and the gap. So the difference between the nick and gap is the same as I mentioned, but uh, sometimes we use this term nick also uh, uh, in place of gap. But uh, definition wise, the uh, nick simply means a break in the phosphodiester bond, gap means you are having uh, missing groups. So that is the term gap. But, uh, Sometimes we also use the term nick for the gap also. So uh, you may say that the both nick and gap are the same thing. But if anyone asks you the difference between the nick and gap, this is the basic difference. Nick is just if a break is there, then you can call it a nick. But when you are calling a gap, there must be missing groups are there. All nicks are not gaps, simply you can say. But all gaps are nicks. So nick means whenever a break is being generated at the next So even the gap is there, so gap you can consider under nick, but all nick you can't consider under gap. Okay, so these are the type uh, that are in the eukaryotes. And then we talk about the different fragmentation and that we know perform the, uh, the fragmentation of uh, enzyme because you want to study what uh, Different fractions of a different portion or different domains of your enzyme have different properties. So we found a fragment that's called the plane of fragment, which mm -hmm. has the five prime, three prime polymerase activity, three prime prime and hexonuclease activity, and one uh, fragment that is smaller fragment that has the only five prime, three prime hexonuclease mm -hmm. activity. So by this way, you've got two types of things. One is having the hexonuclease activity alone. So if you want, if you want to perform a function in which you want, Removal of a uh, group from the 3 prime to the 5 uh, sorry, 5 prime to the 3 prime, so then you can get uh, this uh, other fragment of or exoquino fragment of your DNA from mm -hmm. 1 and this has only exoquino mm -hmm. to the 5 prime to the 3 prime direction. So, uh, uh, like as in previous one, also when we were talking about the nucleases, uh, exonuclease, uh, they, they break different strands, so this is one type of. Uh, you can if you wish to break three from three prime to the uh, sorry five prime to the three prime, so you can buy this exactly now. Uh, this is just a moment.
Okay, so back uh, then the application and the polymerase we talk about then we mentioned the uh, most stable polymerase that the tag is the most important one but it's not just other uh, other polymerase polymerase are also there and we left at this point uh, reverse transcriptase okay so uh, I forgot one thing uh, when uh, starting this one. Today is the session that is our laboratory session. So we have to talk about the laboratory. But just before starting, I will just uh, review what we have done. Okay, so all of you are here also. So now we can move to our laboratory part. And before moving to the laboratory part, I am creating an assignment. And in that assignment, you have to upload your uh, laboratory one the first experiment that we have done that is the extraction of dna you have to write it on your uh, plain paper scan it and upload it in the pdf single pdf form don't upload multiple images or multiple files must upload in a single pdf form okay so for that i'm creating an assignment for you all Okay, so hope all of you have received the assignment. Okay, so each after each, uh, so like today we have discussed or conducted our experiment or our lab. So by next uh, lab, you have to write and have to upload. And one more thing, each laboratory assignment, each return part is going to be of two marks. If you are delaying uploading, it means you are losing these two marks. So simply means if we are conducting five experiments, then total marks are going to be 10. Uh, 10 experiments and total marks are going to be 20. So these marks we are just getting after uploading the return file. First, one, be assured that don't upload, don't think that I'm not seeing these, uh, whatever you are going to upload. I'm definitely I'm going to check them and I will uh, return you with the marks. Okay. So if it is going to be uploaded proper way, and don't think that uh, you can do for one is going to just write and you will take the same uh, uh, one and you will upload it on your name. So don't do that also. Just write yourself and upload it on there. Just by uploading, just by doing this, you are going to get, you are assuring your two marks at every upload. Okay? So do it on time. So you will get marks there. If you are delaying, even delaying, even a second, you are losing all two marks. Okay, so you are going to have a day, uh, time of seven days for uploading it. Okay, so to, for today, uh, so for uh, this assignment, you I have given you one uh, one more extra day. That means that up to Thursday, so you can upload till tomorrow, 12 midnight. But from next way onward, so you are going to get just seven days for writing and uploading. Okay. Is it clear to you all? Is yes, sir. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so is it available to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so now we can move to our. Uh, yeah, we want to create the create. Next laboratory that is going to be. Uh, some of one, some one of you asked about. Uh, uh, so quality of your DNA. Who asked this question? So how to get uh, that the quality of DNA? Who asked this? 
Someone of you asked about the quality of DNA. किसने पूछा था सवाल क्वालिटी ऑफ डीएनए का किसी को याद ही नहीं है सब भूल जाते हैं पूछ के ऐसा कुछ ओके सो इज इज फाइल अवेलेबल टू डिजिबल टू यू वर्ड फाइल Yes. Yes. Okay. So now we are at the second one. Means uh, in the first experiment, you have talked about that you got the DNA, how to extract the DNA, and after extraction the DNA, you are going to have the DNA. Now the next job that you have to do, the next thing that you have to do, the quantification of your DNA. That how much DNA you have. And what quality your DNA is? So, so quality can be of two types. One is the integrity of your DNA, and the second is your purity of your DNA. So on these two bases, you can tell that the quality of DNA is DNA of good quality or DNA of poor quality. So if uh, your DNA is not having uh, just DNA, it also have the lots of amount of proteins. It have lots of amount of RNA. So then uh, it is not a pure DNA. Then it is a mixture of DNA. So while you are going to perform some of your experiments, then chances are there uh, uh, failure may be there. So like simply you all know that uh, your RT PCR that you are going to use for detection of the COVID. So in that DNA that you are going to isolate RNA from there, that RNA you are going to convert into DNA. So at any step, there are going to be impurities are going to be there that can harm your, that can hamper your results, hamper can either hamper your experiment. So like if instead of RNA you are not having uh, DNA, so then uh, that interference may be there. Like you are having protein, so these proteins may inhibit the action of your polymerases. So some proteins are there. Then if the protease is there, then they may lyse your uh, polymerase. So in that case, uh, you might not get the amplification. So these impurities should not be there. And the second uh, is the quality shared one. So DNA, you know that the DNA is very large molecule, so it is shared one. So then you can't, you are going to may interpret a wrong result. If you want to amplify your DNA, then uh, the reason that you want to amplify that is a shared one. So you are not going to get a right result. So the quantity and the quality of two things are going to be an important aspect uh, to check and. Uh, Quality in terms of uh, purity. Sorry, I'm having a bit cold today. So please bear it. Okay. So uh, we are talking about quality. So uh, so one thing, quality in terms of integrity, we can uh, we have to perform electrophoresis. There also only we can see and check. But when we are talking about the quality uh, in terms of the presence and absence of protein or uh, mra into your sample that we can do without the electrophoresis also. okay so this is the experiment that you have to conduct the spectro photometric analysis of the okay. so as all of you have studied i think in your semester uh, photochemistry in which semester you studied photochemistry Photochemistry in which semester you studied? Photochemistry. Yeah, that basic that that that's only I'm going to ask. I'm not going to ask you more than that. Okay, in the photochemistry, you might be uh, have studied the Lambert's Beer's law. I have studied Lambert's Beer's law. Lambert's Beer's law. Who is Jawab? Who has not studied Lambert's Beer's law? Sonaya Nam Lambert's and Beer's law.
मेंबर्स बियर्स का नाम सुना है किसी ने इन ड्रॉप साइलेंस नो वन नोज हु इज मेंबर एंड बियर सर लैम्बर्ट्स का पता नहीं बियर जो रूपी के सो जाते हैं हम ऐसा कुछ इज इट लाइक दैट बियर तो पता होगी पीते हो सभी और नॉट अवेयर अबाउट बियर आल्सो आदिश आयुषी डेमेट्रियस जवानशी यस आदिश आदेश यस सर यस बियर पता है बियर नहीं कितने तरह के नहीं बियर का भी नहीं पता नहीं सर यार ये ऐसा तो हो नहीं सकता है ना कि बियर का क्या पता लेबर का तो चलो छोड़ दो बियर का तो पता होगा नहीं पता है बस हाँ छूट बोल रहा है सर जिंजर जिंजर एल पता है बस जिन का पता जिन बियर का जिंजर एल जिंजर ये क्या होती है भाई सर जिंजर बेस्ड एक ड्रिंक होती है वो बताए सर मोजी भी तो हाँ सर एक मोही तो होता है विवेक तो कह रहा था पता आदि विवेक तो कह रहा जोर बोल रहा है तो नहीं सर 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 उसके बाद आप मत सुनिए <laughs> क्यों है सर मैं पता है <laughs> सर वो वहां पे तो मजे कर रहे हैं हाँ वहां पे सर बगल में एक लिए बैठा होगा है ना यही करने जा रहे हैं नो सर नंबर पता पता आदिश तो मैं भी है सारा ओके okay. चलो पता है नहीं पता है वो तुम्हारी मन की मर्जी लेकिन वी वर एट Our experimental lemmers and here, so thinking that uh, spectrophotometry that we are going to conduct and the spectrophotometry, uh, when with the term that you all might uh, are aware and who are not remembering, I can't uh, help them because here I'm not going to uh, talk about the basics of that. So uh, simply that thing uh, is uh, there that every substance have its Unique behavior in toward light, and that unique behavior toward light is in term of absorbance. In some substances, going to absorb the things, some substances are not going to absorb. But when they are going to absorb, uh, that are going to be specific for a specific substance. And uh, after the absorption, absorption of that radiation, the something that is going to form that through that we call the absorption spectra. so the absorption spectra depends upon as i mentioned that every substance has its unique uh, wavelength that it absorb so on that basis we are going to work here so here that we are going to sample of interest that we are going to have here is the dna so our dna is going to uh, be uh, active to the light when we are saying active to the light means we are going to absorb the radiation So now, uh, how much your DNA going to absorb? What wavelength your DNA going to absorb? All that essentially we can quantify. Not just quantify, we can also tell you the quality of your DNA. Because uh, when we are talking about the uh, absorption, when you are talking about the DNA uh, and the protein, so protein have a different absorption maxima. Uh, DNA going to have a different absorption maxima. And the RNA is going to be there. Then RNA also has going to have different absorption. So DNA is the one which absorbs radiation at 260. 260 nanometer of the radiation DNA is going to absorb at a maximum. Wherever if the protein is there, that is going to absorb to 80. So taking their ratios, we can check whether Or the quality of DNA is good, or your mRNA. Number spheres, number spheres, number. 
This formula. So, whatever you are going to have here, and we have your way observance, fixing the path length, that's an end of stressing to the substance, you can get the concentration. All this you can do. And this, all as I mentioned, 260, yes. the one you is going to have your two APs on which you are uh, protein will absorb, 260 at the DNA will absorb. And uh, it's not just like that uh, when I'm saying 260, your DNA is going to absorb with your protein. DNA will want to absorb at 280. DNA also will absorb at 280. So the ratio between the uh, 260 and 280 is going to be constant for every substance. Like when you talk about the DNA, so ratio is going to be 1.8. If you have a pure DNA, if you have a pure DNA, and take out uh, absorption at 260 nanometer and at 280 nanometer, you will found a fixed ratio, whatever the concentration you will take. That is 1.8. Okay, so if you bring out 1.8, it means your sample is pure. So now, if your protein is going to be there in your sample, then protein is going to contribute to the 280 absorbance. Then what is going to be occur? So ratio is going to be decreased. Is 260 wavelength that is for your DNA is going to remain constant, but 280 which is because of protein that will start increasing. So that will if this ratio what is start it will some increase is going to be there. And again, if you are going to have more uh, ratio more than 1.8, so more than 1.8 now it came with the RNA. So if RNA is there. So RNA is going to contribute more to 260, less to 280. So if the absorption is more, the ratio is more than 1.8, that means the uh, contamination of your RNA is there in your sample. So now I would like to request someone of you. So please read the text of it. So who will read the text for me? Adish? Sir, uh, for the principal? Yes, for the principal. Uh, I can man unless yes. you want Adish to read it. Yes, uh, uh, please do be quick. Uh, the reaction is that use nucleic acids often require amount and purity for optimum performance. Therefore, quantification of nucleic acids is commonly performed to determine the average concentration of DNA in a mixture as well as its purity. Uh, quantification of DNA is very important step in many procedures where it is necessary to know the amount of DNA that is present when carrying out restriction, digests, or performing PCR and RIPD analysis. There are various methods to quantify DNA, most used being A, running the sample through agarose gel alongside some samples of known concentrations, both tagged with fluorescent dye, B, spectrophotometric determination. And uh, a spectrophotometer uses the absorption of light through liquid to determine the concentration of substance in that liquid. The molecules absorb different wavelengths of light to various degrees, and most have a specific wavelength that they maximally absorb. Uh, in case of nucleic acids, the maximum absorbance is at 260 nanometers. While proteins show maximum absorbance at 280 nanometers, a spectrophotometer works on the principle of Beer Lambert's law. Mathematically, <clears throat> uh, Beer Lambert's law can be written as uh, um, uh, 
Sorry, sir, it is blurry at my end. Uh, uh, where A is absorbance, um, epsilon is molar extinction coefficient, uh, L is the optical path length, and uh, C is the concentration of the sample. The optical density is given by um, OD is equal to log of intensity of incident light over the intensity of transmitted light. Uh, using Beer Lambert's law, one can determine the concentration of DNA without the use of standard curves. Uh, should I keep going? Yes, keep going. Um, A260 unit is the amount of nucleic acid contained in one uh, um, microliter. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, the symbols are blurry for some reason, sir. Microliter, sorry. microliter. One microliter of solution and gives an OD of one. Um, OD of one. For double standard DNA conversion factor, for example, A uh, A260 is equal to 50 micro micrograms per milliliter, which means that a concentration of 50 micrograms per milliliter double standard DNA in one microliter sample at a wavelength of 260 nanometers has an OD of one. Similarly, for single standard DNA conversion factor is A260 uh, is equal to 33 micrograms per milliliter. Therefore, for a fixed path, path length, the concentration of DNA per milliliter of solution can be calculated by multiplying OD with conversion factor. Okay, so simply here we can, uh, as uh, this uh, is showing that you get, uh, on the using real numbers law, you don't need any standard law, just finding the absorption of that basis you can calculate. So here the simple calculation is that if you are going to have an OD of 1 at 260 nanometer, that OD of 1 at 260 nanometer means your sample that DNA uh, sample that you are having is going to have 50 microgram per mm -hmm. of concentration. Okay, so depending on how much volume you are ha uh, having, you can calculate it. And uh, what absorbance we are going to have, simply if you are handling about the absorbance of 1, we are getting the absorbance of 0.5, so you can simply can do the 5 multiplied by uh, uh, 50, and it, it simply means that 25 microgram per ml of your DNA is there. So this is uh, for you, uh, this is for your uh, uh, DNA, and uh, this DNA is a double standard DNA. So whether your DNA is double standard or single standard, you can also differentiate here. If your DNA is uh, single standard, then uh, this, uh, yeah. this coefficient is going to be further less. And uh, in that case, if you are going to have an OD of 1 at 260 nanometer, the conversion factor simply means uh, it is going to be 33 microgram per m. So if, if sample is given to you, it's going to be double standard, and you are going to get an uh, OD1, then you can you have to calculate on the basis of 50 microgram per ml. But you're going to have a single strain DNA, you have to calculate on the basis of 33 microgram per ml of your DNA. Okay, so now as you we are talking about the sample purity, so sample purity is uh, ratio based. So, uh, Vivek, please read it again also. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, please read it uh, from sample purity. Uh, okay. Um, sample purity is the ratio of absorbance at 260 nanometers and 280 nanometers. It is used to assess the purity of nucleic acids. A ratio of 1.8 is generally accepted as pure DNA if the ratio is appreciable lower than 1.8. It may indicate protein impurity or the presence of phenol. If the ratio is higher than 1.8, it may indicate the presence of basic impurities as well as RNA contamination. Okay, so this simply on the basis of uh, your uh, ratios you can tell that whether your sample is going to be pure or not because as i mentioned that 260 to 80 uh, uh, this whenever you're talking about uh, your spectra if you anyone of you have remembered the spectra means throughout the visible uv radiation range what radiation is going to be absorbed so uh, like uh, when you're talking about the two radiation like 260 and 280 so at every wavelength is going to be absorbed but some wavelengths are going to be absorbed more some wavelengths are going to be absorbed less so 260 is maximally absorbed 280 is not the uh, going to be maximally but it may be some way less but the ratio is going to be constant so whatever amount you are going to have that ratio will remain constant so 
So for a pure DNA sample, this ratio is going to be 1.8. If you are just having the DNA and check the spectra and uh, check the absorbance at these two different wavelengths, you will find the ratio of these two absorbers to be 1.8. So any fluctuation left or right, up or down, means impurity is there. So what type of impurity can contribute to what? So as I mentioned, 280 is a contribution. At 280, your protein can contribute. And at 260, your uh, RNA can contribute. So based on that, you can uh, you can suggest that this sample may have the protein impurity or may have the DNA impurity or may have the both. Okay, so if you found that ratio of the DNA you're going to have, it have uh, less ratio, means it have the, its ratio is less than 1.8. So then you are going to suspect that protein impurities are there. So to get rid of the protein impurity, you have to treat your sample with a phenol chloroform and isomyl alcohol. So that will remove the protein and after uh, continuing these steps, then you can resonate your DNA and check it again. So now after performing, uh, you found that now your ratio is uh, increased. It means earlier you are finding that 280 absorbance was more and 260 absorbance was less. But now what you are getting, you are getting 260 absorbance more and 280 absorbance less. So this means you have removed the protein, but something other than protein is also be there. So that is your RNA. So to remove RNA, you have to treat your DNA with the RNAs. RNA is in uh, nucleus, which is going to create your RNA. So this is the, your thing. So how you are going to work? So this is the methodology. So please Vivek, read the methodology also. Vivek? Uh, yes, sir. Please continue the methodology. Uh, okay. Um, uh, step one, the spectrophotometer was switched on 15 minutes before use. Step two, a blank test tube containing only the solvent, water, or uh, buffer was prepared. Step three, another sample tube containing the DNA sample suspended in the buffer was prepared. Step four, the blank was inserted in the spectrophotometer and the device calibrated by adjusting the knob till a null reading was obtained. Step five, the sample was then pured into the cuvette and absorbance measured at 260 nanometers and 280 nanometers. Step six, the sample purity was then calculated using the values of absorbance at 260 nanometers and uh, 280 nanometers. Okay, so this is a simple uh, thing, so you don't need to do much in it. So I'm sharing with the virtual lab platform, so where you can uh, see the spectrophotometry. Just a moment. Okay, so. Uh, so this is a virtual lab platform, so if this is at the V lab. Uh, and uh, value at Amrita spectrophotometry. So here you can see how the spectrophotometer is going to work. So this is the theory of it. So all thing that we have talked about, so it's there in this theory. So how it is going to be work, this is a light source, how light is going to pass through it. So all these things are here. So the observer is also there, how to carry out this experiment. So any any of the spectrophot spectrometry experiment that you have to perform, mm -hmm. so procedure are going to be same. So and, and, uh, only thing is going to change, it is your sample. And uh, when you are performing it, you must keep a blank. So blank means that the sample do not have DNA and it have everything else, like your buffers or your uh, solvents. Okay, so then come to the your uh, instrument. So your whatever your your instrument is like this. So any uh, any type uh, have any different design. So it is going to have a lid. So you have to open the lid. So and, and the spaces are there where you can place your cuvettes. So cuvettes are going to be. Uh, so these are the uh, these uh, rectangular uh, uh, tubes are there. So they, they are the cuvettes. So in these uh, cuvettes you have to place your sample. So and the sample is going to be in liquid form. And not just a liquid, it must be a transparent solution. 
so as uh, we mentioned that in the spectrophotometry we are working with the solution so solution only going to absorb if solution is not there then the scattering will be there scattering is not an absorption so scattering is bit different from the absorption so scattering is like light is striking to some something then it is being diffracted or it is reflected so it is a scattering but absorption is light being absorbed when light side to it it is going to absorb so absorption you are seeing the absorption phenomena in that case your solution must be transparent so while you are reading your dna sample for uh, spectroscopy photometry fast must centrifuge it so that it's it and take a clear supernatant otherwise you are will have a ambiguous results okay so place these cuvettes uh, uh, into your uh, uh, slots which are dedicated for uh, your uh, uh, placing your these cuvettes so these cuvettes are sample to be one for non concentration uh, second is going to be unknown concentration and third is going to be blank so this blank is going to have everything other than your sample sample means your dna the other than dna it is going to have everything what are uh, in which you have dissolved your dna simple as we went to when you are extracting a dna for dissolution of a dna we used tris edt as a buffer so this blank is going to be tris edt so what are the absorption this tris edt is going to be there so we have to subtract this absorbers from the our sample one because these absorbers this is the contribution of this blank okay so blank means making your instrument zero so to this we will assign your instrument that it is a zero one so then uh, generally different uh, depending upon your instrument some instruments are being handled by uh, connected to the laptop or some are in that way so in that way you can have to change so like as you can see nanometers are being changed so you have to change your nanometers so as in our case we need uh, 260 so we can uh, bring down to 260 also and uh, it is not changing so. okay so you want yeah. absorbance or transmittance that also you can change yeah this is yeah. now it's showing t this t stand for transmittance so this is the how what you are reading out you are reading uh, absorbed light or you are reading transmitted light in principle our instrument read the transmitted light no instrument can tell you what light being absorbed but it can tell you what light being transmitted out so if 100 photons you are transmitting so out of 100 photons how many photons are reaching to your detector will be calculated so like if out of 100 if the 98 are reaching to you it means two photons are being absorbed so on that basis you can you are calculating it again like this transmittance inversely to the absorbance more the transmittance less is going to be the absorbance less is the trans uh, transmittance more is going to be the absorbance okay so then after doing it close the placing your sample close the lid okay and then print so when you print it will read the how much absorbance your sample is going to have so if you found that uh, reading that you are going to have it is going to be in term of absorbance it is a minus one so Should be in the plus one. Very not so depending upon what you can, uh, what you are setting here. Okay. So in this way, uh, we have to perform our experiment. We have to place your sample and take the reading. So this is the way you do. So when you are going to come to our lab, we are going to have a different type of spectrophotometer. So different company, different, uh, 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 different type of instrument they provide. So the Parkil and Elmer is a one which is providing very nice spectrophotometer also. But other than Parkil, we have uh, Versa Max is also there. So different company. Maybe it's not necessary for you to remember, but uh, it's good to remember also because in future, if you need, uh, if you want to purchase when you are going to be in lab, so what instrument you should use and what type of uh, good instruments are there, so that we see you can choose also. Okay. So this is the one uh, how you are going to quantitate uh, your DNA, and uh, uh, after the quantitation, how you can just not just uh, quantitation, how you can tell the uh, integrity and the purity of your sample also. Okay. So uh, now uh, it's to you all. 
if you want to ask anything uh, please ask so just uh, i would like to show some precautions are there for it uh, precautions in way if, uh, you have to keep precaution in term of uh, as uh, when you are reading the protocol we uh, talk and that you must turn on your respective photometer before 20 minutes of reading so why uh, prior uh, turning on is required not uh, how why you not just immediately after turning on we should take the reading so now instrument are coming a bit efficient so you can even take the reading just turning it on but if you turn it on little before that it takes a bit time for heating up heating up means its length is heated heated up so when lens go, uh, sorry lamp got heated up uh, completely then it uh, it is going to provide you a uniform radiations so that's why we are turning it on uh, at least 10 to 20 minutes prior to uh, starting your experiment so you should keep uh, this in your mind so one of the precaution in your experiment should turn your instrument uh, at least 10 to 20 minutes before when you are starting it second uh, precaution is uh, you need to take about uh, these uh, cuvettes so as uh, we mentioned that these cuvettes are going to be uh, one in which you are going to reading you are uh, they are going to uh, tell you that what capture this thing to be there if your these cuvettes are not going to be clean if these cuvettes are not going to be clean then what they can do then they can tell you the wrong results wrong results means the real absorption is going to be lesser but because of uh, uh, they are not clean their path is not clean so the transmittance is going to be less so the absorbance uh, result will be more so these cuvettes must be clean and the use the cuvette depends upon the what wavelength you are choosing so thing is that as uh, many of you might be aware about that the uv can't penetrate much okay so if your cuvette is of a plastic if your material of cuvette is able to absorb the uh, ultraviolet radiation then what is going to happen that you are not going to get any absorber so you are not going to get any type of the results because it have absorbed everything every radiation so it is not passing through it so your cuvettes must be uv transparent if your cuvettes are not uv transparent then your readings are not going to be right so in that case you use the quartz cuvette so if you are working with the ultraviolet radiation or use uv transparent cuvettes so first ensure that what time the cuvette that you are going to use whether they are uv transparent or not because 280 and 260 they lie in the ultraviolet range so for it is must that your cuvettes must be uv transparent this is another precaution that you must keep while you are working with it transparent and uh, uh, clean and the one more thing is that avoid the cross contamination cross contamination is why you are using some uh, pipettes so use a new pipette for every type of uh, a new set one don't mix them because uh, uh, this contamination is going to be Ample for you. Uh, like might be one sample is going to be pure, and another sample is going to be impure, and uh, you are using same tip, uh, same pipette for both things. So in that case, so the sample which uh, appears to be which is really pure, but because of your cross contamination, you will found that your sample is impure. So don't do that. So these are few precautions that you must keep. while performing your experiment or while reading out your thing uh, so this is the procedure is any procedure okay so vivek uh, uh, vivek yes sir vivek please read the point remember while performing experiment in the real laboratory Uh, okay so um always wear lab coat and gloves when you are in the lab when you enter the lab switch on the exhaust fan and make sure that all the chemicals and reagents required for the experiment are available if they are not available prepare the reagents using the components for reagent preparation 
Uh, two, make sure to clean all your working apparatus with chromic acid and distilled water and ensure that all the apparatus are free from water droplets while exploring the exp performing the experiment. Three, make sure to calibrate the electronic wave balance before taking the measurements. Four, ensure that the spectrophotometer is working properly. Five, ensure that you are handling the cuvette with tissue paper. Never touch it with your hand. Six, wipe the cuvette with tissue paper before placing the spectrophotometer. Seven, clean all glassware with soap and distilled water. Once the experiment is completed, recap the reagent bottles. Switch off the light and exhaust fan before leaving the lab. And eight, discard the used gloves in a waste bin. Okay, there are a few more quick questions that we must uh, uh, take care of. Because the one thing uh, handling with the tissue paper is one, or if you're not handling the tissue paper, just uh, don't touch your finger in the direction of the path of light. This is what it is going to do. If you are touching your finger, then your fingerprints may appear on the your uh, path sense of your cuvettes so then your fingerprints may also interfere the uh, path of light so for that don't touch fingers the path of your your cuvettes that this is also a uh, must uh, precaution so with this i am uh, resting uh, your first session and uh, i am sharing the link of this uh, so meanwhile uh, all of you read it and uh, Come back in our next session uh, for the discussion of your lab one. So we will do some calculation also in that. So how to calculate what if uh, some readings are going to come to you. So what is going to be your assessment if you get that thing. OK, so uh, I have pasted the link on the chat box. Please go at the link, read whatever you can read there and whatever you find and come up with the questions. So first I will take your questions and then I will move further. OK, so the uh, so how many of you are present? Okay. So one is absent is uh, Nandini present. Nandini. 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 Nandini is absent. And what's the Devanchi? Ivanchi. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So who is absent today? So who is absent today? Sir, sir it's a toy bar. Okay. Okay, so we'll join back after five minutes at three fifteen. So till then, stay safe, stay happy, and take some water, drink some water, and uh, keep uh, rest to your eyes also.